Hello and welcome to Geordie Leather. Let me just start off by saying thank you to everyone that's entered the February 2021 competition so far for the giveaway. If you haven't already done so, please head across to geordieleather.com and click on the giveaway tab to enter. Uh, you must be a subscriber obviously to enter, so please click that subscribe button if you haven't already and give us a like. So this is a short series of videos I'm going to do it in four parts. This is part one, obviously. So um, the first part is going to cover the general use, the bits and pieces, the parts, the names, how they work, a general introduction to industrial sewing machines. Um, part two will be a more detailed view of how you slow down the speed of an industrial sewing machine by fitting a reducing system. Part three, just check my notes, where is it? We're going to cover all the things like um, threads, different needle sizes, how to match threads with needles, what the material you're using, um, how to thread the how to thread the sewing machine, how to tension it correctly, how to correct tension issues, how to install bobbins, how to wind bobbins, um, all the nitty gritty of getting started with your machine. Part four will be introducing some basic sewing techniques for both leather and other fabrics. So we're going to kick off today with a, a general overview of what an industrial sewing machine can do for you as a leather worker or other crafter. So as I mentioned in the previous video um, there are basically two types of industrial sewing machine, a flatbed machine and a cylinder arm machine. Now I showed you the difference last time but I have a cylinder arm machine as I explained before because they're a lot more versatile and if you are just beginning I always recommend buying a cylinder arm machine. So this is my machine. Generally they're made of very solid construction and this is an cast iron which makes it very heavy but also very stable um, so there's no vibration problems. So, you see, this is a cylinder arm machine because it has an arm, a cylindrical shaped arm which sticks out and that allows you to get bags, sleeves, other long, round or intricate items where you want to get inside to stitch something or to stitch very close to the edge. Now, so looking at the machine, it looks quite intimidating, but don't worry about that. It's actually quite a simple device. Um, first of all, all the electrics, the power, or under the bench so there's nothing electrical here to worry about it's purely mechanical so um, on the right this big disc is called the balance wheel now that allows a bit of fine control of the up and down movement of the needle now that's attached via a belt to a motor under the table now once it's turned on the motor obviously applies um, rotation to the balance wheel when you press the pedal. Now you can control the speed of the motor by varying how much you press the pedal. Now I'll quickly show you the pedals. Most machines have at least one pedal. Now, as you can see this machine has two. The left larger pedal is the accelerator. It controls the speed of the motor. That's attached by this link rod which links the pedal to the motor via a little lever. Now the more pressure you put on that pedal the faster the motor will spin and the less pressure the slower the motor will spin. Now on this machine the right pedal is connected with a chain to the presser foot arm, which I'll show you in a moment. When you press the right pedal, it raises the presser foot. Now, before we leave the pedals, going back to the first pedal, the big pedal, it has two functions. You press it forward, it controls the speed. But if you press the back end of the pedal here, that actually automatically resets the position of the needle to the up position. I'll show you that in a moment. So um, moving to the left, this big black knob here, 
This is what you call the stitch length dial. Now it's numbered from one to six, which is approximately in millimeters. So number six would be a six millimeter wide stitch. Five would be a five millimeter and so on. Um, generally, this is just generally for leather and other thicker materials, you want to use quite a wide stitch. So I would suggest either a five or a six. I use a six most of the time for the leather work I do. But if you're sewing fabrics and other thinner materials, generally a narrower stitch is more appropriate and looks more in keeping with the material. So on the top of the machine, there's a little post sticks up and through that is threaded the thread from the spool holder. Now, we're gonna discuss the threading of threading of spools later on in the series. So for now, we'll just say that the thread comes through here and then goes through. This is the tensioning mechanism for the sewing machine. Now a tensioning mechanism simply applies tension to the thread. So it's neither too slack nor too tight. And again, we're going to go into that in much more detail when we come to the tensioning and threading of the machine. And just to the left of the tensioning system is the thread take-up lever and the take-up lever guard. Now coming down, you've got the actual needle and the presser foot itself. So I'll get you a close-up of that. <coughs> So at um, this end, so at this end of the machine, the actual bit that does all the hard work is the the needle, which is here obviously, the needle foot, the walking foot, as I explained in the previous video, this is a walking foot sewing machine, which means the actual foot walks forward and pushes the material through past the presser foot. Now the presser foot, its only task is to press the material against the, the dog underneath here, which grips the material and pushes it through. So they work together as a team. The presser foot pushes the material against the, the underneath dog, which pulls it through, and the walking foot presses the material from the top and pushes the material through. So together, they work as a team to pull the material through the system while the needle punctures and sews the material at the same time. So, only thing left on this side of the machine is this little lever here. Now, normally the machine stitches in a forward direction, but when you come to sew, you'll see that at the beginning of a stitch and at the end of a stitch, you do what's called back stitching backstitching reverses the direction of the thread so that it locks in the ends of the thread and prevents them coming on loose. So when you get to the beginning or the end of a run of stitching, you just press down the lever and that reverses the direction of the stitch and allows you to backstitch. We'll cover that in more detail when we do the actual stitching part of this tutorial. Um, so that is basically the fundamental parts of a sewing machine, an industrial sewing machine. Um, this little cap on the end here, inside there is the bobbin and the hook, which we'll go into more detail when we cover the stitching and bobbin threading section. Okay, so that was a very, very basic introduction to industrial sewing machines. I didn't go into much detail in this first part. That was intentional. I don't want to overload you. I appreciate when you get one of these big machines, it can be a bit scary. So in the next part, we're going to go into a lot more detail, taking each step stage by stage. So we're going to be dealing with threading next, tensioning, bobbins, all that good stuff. So until part two, thanks for watching. And if you haven't already checked out georgieleather.com website. You'll find it's the, got the biggest selection of products for the leather worker, materials, tools, equipment, all sorts of goodies. So have a look, check it out. We do free, I mean free 
shipping anywhere in the world, no matter what size the order. So again, thanks for watching, and until part two, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.